I just wanted to comment a little bit on today's first reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Notice this proverb that I guess was often repeated by the Jewish people. And the proverb is, the parents have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. And basically God is saying, stop repeating this proverb. So what does this proverb mean? Well, basically nobody eats sour grapes. So to eat sour grapes is something that's wrong. And it's implying that the sins of the parents or the wrongful actions of the parents affect the children. And the, the, because the children's teeth are set on edge, it's indicating that it has a negative impact on their children. Now, while this statement is true, it is true that, you know, how our parents live does affect us, it doesn't mean that we can just blame things on our parents. And this is what God is trying to say. So God is pointing out that he is just. Each person will be judged according to how they behave. And sure, our parents may have affected us in a good way. They may have affected us in a bad way, bad way but we are the ones who make the decisions. We are the ones who make choices in life. And so we cannot just blame other people for our sins, even though to some extent they may influence us. Now, this doesn't um, dispense the parents from their role or the importance of their role. And this is also brought out in today's first reading. Uh, in verse 10, it says, if he has a son who is violent, a shedder of blood, then he, shall then he live? So in other words, this is referring to the parent or the father. If he has a son who is violent, a shedder of blood, shall he then live? He shall not. He has done all these abominable things. He shall surely die. So yes, it's true. Sometimes parents can be negligent. Sometimes parents can lead their children to resentment. Sometimes parents can, you know, act very badly towards their children, which causes their children also to be messed up and and to do bad things so yes in in some sense the parents are definitely responsible and this is why good parenting is so important now in the olden days you know it was the grandparents who would pass on and teach the parents how to deal with children today we don't really have that you know traditionally when a young couple got married they would stay with the elderly parents until they were able to afford their own home that doesn't happen today i'm not saying there's bad parents today but we've lost some of the wisdom of parenting today so it's just something worthwhile thinking about and in today's gospel reading, it's about our Lord, um, his attitude towards children. So notice the disciples, they want to prevent people from bringing their children to Jesus. Why? They're, the disciples think, oh, well, Jesus is too busy. He's got other things to deal with, other people to deal with. He doesn't have time for little children. And, you know, when we, when we think about you know, some people who are very concerned about their status in society, like they're usually concerned about what their peers think or people who are older. They don't really care about what little children think. So sometimes people, when they're caught up in themselves or just seeking a worldly uh, success or, or worldly, worldly glamour, they tend not to care about children, which is very unfortunate. So our Lord is pointing out that he's not like that. He is someone who cares about the little ones, about not just children, but the poor, the, the, uh, you know, the underprivileged. He cares about everyone, but especially about little children. And, and he doesn't just welcome them, but notice what he says. He says, let the little children come to me and do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of heaven belongs. And this is a phrase worthwhile thinking about because in what sense does the, the kingdom of heaven belong to, let's say, little children even before they've reached the age of reason? You know, we, we often we say, oh, well, you need to believe in God. Well, little children, you know, what level of faith do they have? What level of understanding? What level of knowledge and, and information do they have? It's a very low level. But, you know, little children can sense whether someone loves them or not. Little children can sometimes sense when someone is evil and wicked. So these little children sense the goodness of Jesus 
they want to be touched by him. They want him to lay his hands on them. Not just the parents, but even the little children. And the fact that our Lord says that the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these, you know, it's, it's a good argument for infant baptism. You know, some non-Catholic Christians, they say, oh, you Catholics, you baptize your children when they're infants. Well, this is a biblical passage that supports infant baptism. It's not just the tradition of the church. It's not just in the writings of the early church fathers, but it's also biblical. In other words, salvation comes to us when we are very young through the sacrament of baptism. And the church's teaching is that parents should baptize their children within a few months after their birth. Now, traditionally, they would baptize their, their children almost right away, sometimes the very day that the ch child is born, because there was such a high rate of inf infant mortality, uh, little children dying you know, soon after birth. So parents would ensure that their children are baptized. If the parents have the intention of baptizing their parents and their child dies, the church's position is that the grace of baptism would, um, would be granted the child because the parents were planning to baptize the child, but something happened and the child happened to pass away. So it's good to be aware of that. And this is also a very pro-life message, welcoming the children as opposed to aborting the children. Now, here's something to, to think about and, and to encourage people about. And it's, it's um, here's these mothers who have these young children. They recognize the holiness of Jesus. What, what level of understanding that he is God incarnate they have, you know, it, it's debatable. But they want this holy man, this Jesus, to bless their children. Now, you and I, we understand who Jesus is. He's not just a great man. He's not just, you know, uh, the founder of a religion. He is God incarnate. If you as a mother have a child, would you not want to bring your children to Jesus to have him bless your, ch your, your child or children? So how do people today bring their children to Jesus in order for Jesus to bless them? Well, yes, they need to have their child baptized. But they also need to, to introduce their children to Jesus. They need to bring their children to church. They need to edu educate their children about who Jesus is, what Jesus does, what he is like. They need to encourage their children to pray to Jesus, to adore and worship Jesus. And you see, it's so, so unfortunate that many parents today are neglecting to do this. When it comes to enrollment for the sacraments for young children, such as First Communion, as well as Confirmation, enrollment is way down. And this is in the Catholic schools. Not every child in our Catholic schools go through our, goes through our sacramental programs. Some of the children in our Catholic schools are not even baptized. Parents are not bringing their children to Jesus. This ought to, ought to cause us to have tremendous concern because Jesus is available to everyone today. I mean, at the time when he was here on earth, you had to physically go to him, but now he's present in every church, in the tabernacle. You can receive Jesus through the sacraments. Children can be baptized. It's, a, it's a so sad that parents are depriving their children of all that Christ offers them, even the very gift of salvation. Let us pray for mothers and, and parents out there that they may be enlightened and that they will take advantage of the tremendous opportunities they have, not just to benefit themselves, but to benefit their children, who, whom I'm sure they're, they tremendously love. Just a brief announcement, the uh, Legion of Mary, they have organized a patricians meeting today. Uh, it will take place at 10.30, lasting till about 12.30. Uh, there will be a talk given on the role of the laity, and also there will be light refreshments available. There will be time for discussions as well as, as questions. So if you're available, if you're interested, please come out for that today in the parish hall.